hata, down, hanging against, in opposition to a veil hanging over the head. Thayer's book, workbook, page two, page 327. Thayer's biblical dictionary, page 327, says the word kata means something hanging over the face like a woman's veil or a woman's hair. A woman's veil or a woman's hair. That's what the word is. What is a Greek word? Kata means something hanging over the face, like a woman's hair or a woman's facial veil. Is anyone with me? Tov, tov. Baruch Hashem Yahweh. Rav Shaul. So he is contrasting the worship of men and the worship of women. That in worship, turn to your neighbor and say, in worship. Let's try this side of the room. In worship. All right? So you, men and women are not to look alike in worship. We are, we are to look and appear to be different, for we are different. And so what Ram Sewell is saying is in the assembly, is he talking about the assembly? Yes. Yes, he is. Why? He's talking about the assembly. In the public assembly, a man and a woman are not to look the same they are they are to be opposed to each other in the sense that they don't look the same what happens if they look the same they are violating the torah principle of devarim chapter 22 and verse number five that's breaking torah not tithing is breaking torah not keeping them all is breaking torah but for a man to dress like a woman, Deuteronomy 22, remember that guy, Boy Gorge, with the, uh, what was the name of that group? Huh? Boy George. Ooh. <laughs> culture Club. The Culture Club. That's right, the Culture Club. Some culture. With that kind of culture, you're gonna go straight to hell. <laughs> so it's Boy Gorge. Or uh, Tim, uh, Tim Tiny, Timothy B. Tiny. Tiny Tim. Tiny, there you go. And he's so busy tipping toe through the tulips, and he, he done died. I, I wouldn't want to be where he is right now because there are no tulips growing, trust me. Turn your neighbor and say, there are no tulips where Tiny is. No tulips where Tiny is. I know that. There are no tulips where Tiny is right now. So the whole point is here, man, if you're going to be Israel, ladies, if you're going to be Israel, don't dress like each other. You cannot wear hers. She cannot wear yours. You are to dress independently of each other and the way Yahweh would have you to properly dress. Make sense? It's pretty clear to me. So what the church has done to you, brothers and sisters, and what Messianic Judaism and others who misteach these verses, they teach, oh, brother, you, if, you, you know, if you're doing the Torah, if you're a man, you better take off your head covering. Because he always says in 1 Corinthians 11.4, a man should not pray with his head covered. It, that's not what it says. It says a man praying or prophesying, having a facial veil that hangs down. And listen, we're not even going to be talking about facial veils. We're going to get even, even deeper than this. But I want you to understand, it's not talking about a head covering. It's talking about immorality. He is dressing a carnal kehillah. He has to address the situation and the ongoing need and the ongoing problem for correction in their immoral lifestyle. So covered, Strong 2596, Katam. Now I want to show you another Satan signature of Satan. Turn your neighbor and say signature of Satan. Turn your neighbor and say signature of Satan. Now at the end of verse 4, we see the word hid capitalized. H. You will not see that word capitalized anywhere else. So the way it's been taught is, hey, uh, Mr. Dago, I saw you wearing a head covering. Don't you know you're dishonoring Christ? Because Christ is the head of the man. Now, that's the way this has been taught. Now, is it true that Mashiach is that? Because I don't recognize Christ. That Mashiach is the head of the man. Is that yeah. true? Is that true? Yeah. That's true. Yeah. But, but the problem is, that is not what Yeshua is talking about here. 
he is talking about a man praying and prophesying with something hanging, like a woman shows up to pray and prophesy, with uh, something hanging over her head. And he says, if a man hangs over his face, what a woman hangs over her face, he is dishonoring his head. And what have we been taught? Oh, that means he's dishonoring the Mashiach. He's dishonoring Mashiach. No. Now, why is that word capitalized, my front row student? I haven't called you that in a long time. Why is this word capitalized? What's going on here? Especially when the Greek word is kapto. Listen. It, um, this word kapto is used twice in this verse. Hello? This word is used twice. Every man in the shop with his head covered. See that word head? See that word head covered? The Greek word is kapto. What is the Greek word for covered? Kata. Every man praying with his head kapto kata or with his head veiled or hanging down, something hanging down from his head, brings shame to his head. Now, both words, head covered and shame to the head, both words are kapto. They're the identical word, kapto. So how come earlier in the verse, is translated as what? Head covering, and the same word later is supposed to refer to Mashiach. You see the confusion? You can't take the same word in the same verse and apply it to Mashiach when three words earlier you applied it to what? To a man's face. To what a man wears. Does any of this make sense? Okay. Now the word kapto can mean can be literal or can be figurative. By the way, brothers and sisters, I'm not a linguist, neither am I am I an etym etymologically inclined, but I do understand that in Greek there are no capitals. How many know a little bit of Greek? How many know a little bit of Greek? Teeny bit. Huh? A little bit. There are no capitals. Did you know that? Right. You know you knew that? There are no capitals. Well, how did this show up in our Bibles capitalized? S? Ooh, that smell. Ooh, that smell. I smell that skunk, don't you? It's an anti-Semitic skunk I'm smelling right now. That's an anti-Semitic skunk. How come, how come in Greek there are no capital letters and this word shows up capitalized in my Bible? Somebody took it upon themselves to put that capital letter in there, didn't they? Somebody took that liberty, didn't they? Amen. Now the same word in verse 4, kapto. So a man having his, his kata, his, um, his kapto, kata, his head covered, brings shame to his what? His head. Bring shame to himself. Not to Messiah, to himself. So a man that is veiled like a woman brings himself shame, not to Messiah, to himself and his reputation as a cross-dresser. You don't bring shame to Yeshua. Nothing you do can, can catch Yeshua by surprise. He's talking about the man shaming himself for what he is wearing. And if a man wears a woman's hang-me-down, turn your neighbor and say, hang-me-down, Hang him down. If a woman is wearing, if a man, pardon me, is wearing a woman's hang me down, he looks like a fool. And he's bringing shame to his head. What head? The one on top of his neck. <laughs> Hallelujah. What head? The one that's right on top of his head. All right? You don't get to look far to bring shame. What shame is he bringing? He bring, he bring, he bring, He's bringing shame to that, to that head sitting right on top of that neck. <laughs> now what the church does is say, no. No, a man, don't come into this place. I remember, can we talk? Can we talk? Many years ago, many moons ago, <laughs> Yeah. 
when I was still searching for my roots. Me and a friend in Uniondale, Long Island, went to a crusade. Now I know better than to use the word crusade. Because when you say crusade to a Muslim or a Jew, they think you're going to kill them in the name of Christ. So be careful if, you, if you're planning a crusade. All right? <laughs> but Bush said, we're, gonna, we're on a crusade in Iraq. And, and the, the advisor said, Mr. Bush, uh, you better change your vocabulary. Or you're going to lose major support in the Arab world. As if he had any support to lose. All right? So we went to the Jimmy Swagger crusade. And this guy who did the, the, the music at my wedding, his name was a Jewish believer named Jeff Crew. And he was wearing a, a black yarmulke, one of those cheap, you know, 50 cent yarmulkes that we have out in the hallway. A man, if you guys start tithing more, we'll be able to afford more expensive yarmulkes. Ruch Hashem Yahweh. How's that for a little Jewish guilt? And uh, he, was, he went into the Jimmy Swagger crusade, and um, he was started talking in tongues. And I said, whoa, man, what are you doing? He had a yarmulke on in front of 25,000 crusaders. And he's praying in tongues. I mean, if you're gonna wear a yarmulke here, can you like climb under the seat? Hide. I mean, we're in a Jimmy Swaggered crusade. There ain't a soul in the house wearing a yarmulke, trust me. And I'm like, yo, man, be quiet. Just get under the seat. I don't want to be with you. Because I, I was a nice Christian boy in those days. And this, this dude's wearing a yarmulke at a Jimmy Swaggered crusade. That's like going to Benny Hinn with a, with a yarmulke and a tzitzit. I mean, you got to be out of your mind and into your shoe's mind. <laughs> I mean, let's be honest. You don't, you don't see the tzitzit on the front row of, the, of a Benny Hinn crusade, do you? So I'm like, ah! And so I said, because I, I believe that, that my friend should not be praying, singing, singing songs to, you, to um, <clears throat> I'll be polite today, Yeshua with a yarmulke in front of 20,000 Goyim. I didn't know they were Ephraimites. I thought they were Goyim. Are you with me? Because I wrongly believe that scripture forbids a, a man to pray with his head covered. But the truth is, brothers and sisters, that word head covered is what? Kapto, kata, talking about what? Not Messiah, but his own head, not the Messiah as the head of the man, but his own head on his shoulders. And he's saying, if a man prays with the same hang me down that a woman has hanging down, he dishonors his own head. Meaning you look silly, you look like a woman and you're a man. And isn't that the most shameful thing in the natural? for a man to look like a woman. And this isn't Rav Shaul teaching Torah. So what the church does and goes, well, he sent Rav Shaul, the Apostle Paul, to, to finish the teachings of Jesus and show the Jews that we're not under the law anymore and all these things that Yahweh said were eternal aren't really eternal. And when Yeshua, because he was a young man, didn't get a chance to finish, he sent Pablo to finish and show all believers that they shouldn't be doing everything that's eternal. Passover, Pentecost, Shavuot, those are eternal things, but now when Yeshua shows up, Yahweh yeah, said, oh, I made a mistake. I'll send my son to reverse my error. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, right. That Yahweh schizophrenic. What kind of Yahweh is that? No. A man? That's not the Yahweh of Scripture. So this, brothers and sisters, this has zero, zero to do with a yarmulke or a man's head covering. Zero. It means if you act like a woman and dress like a woman in the house of Yahweh, you're a fool and you're, you're not making Yahweh look foolish, you're making your own head look foolish. You cannot capitalize that because there's no capitals in Greek. Someone arbitrarily capitalized the second head in verse 4 and left the first head uncapitalized. Now who prayed, tell me, did that? Who said that? No comment. Hello? You can't have your cake and eat it too. If it, if it, verse, if it says covered in verse 4, meaning referring to a, a hang-me-down, you can't say that whatever is hanging down is Christ. A man can't, can't 
doesn't have something called Christ to put on his head. <laughs> figuratively, yes. Figuratively, the Messiah is the head of the man. That's figurative. But even if it's figuratively, so now we're into authority structure. We're not into forbidding a man to wear a head covering. Even if this is figural, let's, let's, say, let's play devil's advocate. How many, want to, how many are ready to play devil's advocate? Let's say this is figurative and not literal. Well, well, guess what? If Mashiach is the head of the man, how does that have to do with a head covering? Yahweh doesn't say don't wear a head covering. It's figurative. But how can that... How can it be figurative at the end of verse 4 when the very same object, head, is literal earlier in verse 4? Are, are you with me? You don't jump. The same word goes from literal to figurative. Sorry, you got to be consistent. It's the same word in the same verse translated two different ways. Make sense? You got to be consistent. Baruch Hashem Yahweh. Figuratively, it means what? The Moshiach is the head of the man, figuratively. Literally, it means what? Whatever is hanging down from your head, Bubba, you're violating the Torah. And there was so much cesspool and immorality in the Kehillah and Corinth that Yahweh, through Rav Shaul, was rebuking their violation of Torah. So here we see Rav Shaul enforcing the Torah, not negating the Torah. He's enforcing the Torah by saying, I'm not going to allow cross-dressing just because this is a renewed covenant assembly. Sorry, the Torah is still in effect. Well, you can sit in a Sunday school for a million years, and you'll never get that Yeshua, that Rav Shul is teaching Torah. He's teaching. He's for, he is reinforcing the principle of what? Devarim 22. He's saying, none of that stuff here. Are you with me? Okay, but it's not even talking about a man's head covering. We'll go further. He was against a man wearing a hang-me-down veil over his face. The custom of women, let me read this. Why does Rav Shul speak of men wearing long hair later in the chapter? Isn't it funny how he goes from, supposedly, from head coverings into hair? Do you ever wonder about that? As we're going to read, you know what we're going to come across? Rashi was talking about the length of man's and women's hair. True? Is now what we're going to come across as we keep reading? So how does, you sh how, does, how does he go from one thing to another? In other words, it doesn't make sense. Hello? It doesn't make sense. How does he go from authority to man shouldn't wear a head covering to women's hair? And try to put those three together into one coherent subject. You ever wonder about that? The, the chapter starts off with what? Proper authority. Then he goes into P.S. A man shouldn't wear a head covering. Allegedly. Turn your neighbor and say allegedly. allegedly. Let's try that again. Allegedly. allegedly. And then he goes further into the chapter and he jumps from allegedly forbidding a man to wear a head covering to the length of women's hair. How does it all fit together? How can we take these three things and make it all fit together? That's the key, to make it all fit together. Baruch Hashem Yahweh. In Corinth, listen, in Corinth, a woman would also, and man would also veil their faces and put on ornamental jewelry like a woman. And therefore, the, in the, um, in, write, these, write these false Elohim down. In the worship of Apollo, write it down, mm -hmm. Apollo, in the temple of Apollo, mm -hmm. in the temple of Poseidon, you would have male prostitutes dressed as women having their face veiled in a hairstyle so that, and in clothing so that the woman looked like the man and the man looked like the woman. In the worship of Poseidon and Apollo. Yahweh says, don't bring me that worship. That's what's going on here. Amen. He's saying, the father is the head of Yahshua. Yahshua is the head of the man. The man is the head of the woman, meaning everyone dress and act in your proper role. This has nothing to do with men not wearing head coverings. The father, is, how does it start out? The father is the head of Mashiach. Mashiach is the head of the man. Man is the head of the woman, meaning... Moshiach does not act like you. You are subject to Moshiach. 
Ladies, you are subject to the man. Be, you are subject to the man because you are different than the man. Yes. So he's emphasizing difference, not sameness. He's criticizing their sameness, as in cross-dressing, but he is emphasizing difference to enforce the principles of Torah. Meaning, how does he start the chapter? Speaking on the subject of authority, right? The father, the son, the man, and the woman. The father, the son, I'm going to bring it all together for you. I'm going to bring it all together for you. The father, the son, the man, and the woman. So as the father is different from the son, do they, are they different? You bet they are. You have the greater Yahweh and the lesser Yahweh. So ought the woman and the man to be different and function in their role, in their authority, in their place, in their calling, in, their, in the kingdom of Yahweh. That's what it's all about. It's not about, brother, was that you at the Jewish bookstore yesterday? Oh, you were buying a head, oh, you were buying a head covering and you were buying pins. Bobby pin. You don't wear a head covering in church. Hello? You're not supposed to wear, if you're a man, don't you know Pablo says you shouldn't wear a head covering in church? A, it's not Pablo. B, he's not talking about a man wearing it because if he did, Rav Shaul would contradict Moshe. Rav Shaul would contradict David. Rav Shaul would contradict all the Kohanim. Rav Shaul would contradict all the men of Israel that lived before the time of Yeshua, which means he wasn't much of a Jew, and he wasn't much of a rabbi, and he couldn't have been speaking and teaching by the same spirit which wrote the, 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 the Tanakh. You better understand Rav Shaul. You better understand Rav Shaul. Because if you don't, you're going to think that he's taught through a different spirit than the spirit that wrote the Tanakh, the first covenant. If he taught in a different spirit, we got some serious problems. He had to teach the exact same thing that Yahweh taught Moshe, that Yahweh taught David, that Yahweh taught Shlomo, that Yahweh taught the Kohanim, that Yahweh taught the Levim. He better be saying the exact same thing, and he is, if we can get rid of these translators. Saying the exact same thing. What is the subject? Spiritual authority that finds its reality in natural biological difference. Nature is now going to take over, or I should say nature is going to walk alongside in conjunction with the Ruach HaKodesh. Nature and the Ruach HaKodesh are going to be your teacher. Hello? Amen. Yahweh is going to use, Rav Shaul through Yahweh, is going to use nature to teach you that a man ought to have his head covered. But not veil with a hang-me-down over the face like the ladies. Because that's the way Apollo was worshipped. That's the way Poseidon was worshipped. That's the way all the false Elohim in Corinth were worshipped. Yahweh said, don't you worship me like that. I want Moshe looking like Moshe. I don't want him looking like Matilda. <laughs> Turn to your neighbor and say, that ain't no Matilda up there. <laughs> Wall saying Matilda. So in other words, he wants Anne to be Anne, not Andy. So Rav Shaul is bringing Torah to an immoral culture and a cesspool of believers who were living in immoral, illicit, and a lifestyle that was an abomination before Yahweh. So rather than him removing Torah, he's inserting it in the middle of a culture that was fixated on Apollo and Poseidon. You listen to what I'm saying to you and get that... that, that Sunday tapes that those those recirculating tapes out of your head Not because they're bad people because it'll confuse you and will cause you not to be able to grasp the truth How can how can that word how can that word head mean um, uh, Mean one thing earlier in verse 4 meaning a person's head, physical head, biological head, and then later the same word means Mashiach. No, he's saying 
The father is the head of who? The son. The son is the head of the man. The man is the head of the woman. Therefore, because of this divine order, you ought not to do anything to negate or nullify this divine order. And what they were doing in Corinth was they were negating and nullifying the divine order by a man letting, wearing something that was a hang-me-down. We're going to get to that something. All right? It wasn't even a, a veil. Now, in the, in the Corinthian temples, when the males would dress up as temple prostitutes, they would literally wear a veil, but Robert, we're not even talking about a veil. You're going to see this. <laughs> Does it blow your mind? Huh? You're going to see. You're not even talking about a veil. It's something that a woman allows to... Ah, that's good. Who said that? Lucy. Tough. I love Lucy. Now you know everyone. She's always on the ball. Baruch Hashem Yahweh. So what is Rav Shul doing? He's saying, sorry, as long as I'm the Shaliyah, there'll be no cross-dressing in this assembly. It's not about going to a Jewish bookstore and buying the yarmulke, walking into a Jimmy Swagger crusade wearing the yarmulke. Now that I'm in Israel, I realize that he was right and I was wrong. I was embarrassed to be seen with him. Truth of the matter is, I should have had my yarmulke on and, let, and then speak in tongues in front of all those Ephraimites. <laughs> See? I thought I was right. He was the one that was right. I was wrong. Amen? So men were beginning to look like woman. This is not talking of a man wearing a head covering in prayer and worship, but some kind of veil. 